These days, I may not get to visit BGC a lot, but I do know of a hidden gem that's too interesting to pass up. And it's located between two condo building towers, so I'm not exaggerating when I say that it's hidden. You can find it by entering through the left side of the Olive Garden on 26th Street or via 7th Avenue through a low-key alley across the Fort Strip parking lot. This is Kiji Bakehouse and it's a French-Japanese boulangerie aka bakery. Fun fact, Kiji is Japanese for the word dough. And in trying to research the concept, I realized that the idea of this bakery is pretty unique. Visually, it has French bistro elements, but it also has modernized kawaii feels. It's like the Japanese take on a modern French bakery. And the thing is, you can't really tell where the European influence ends and where the Asian one begins. This is thanks to the founder having a visual design background, so the aesthetic from the interiors to the food is cohesive. In short, Instagrammable siya. They also have this area on the right where there are Japanese and French reading materials because the details maketh the look. And here is the drink and ice cream menu. Prices for beverages range from 120 to 200 pesos. They have a couple of non-coffee drinks as well as the option to switch from cow's milk to oat milk for an additional fee. On the left side of the bakery are ready-made breads to grab and go. They have pandesal, ciabatta, mini croissant, brioche pan loaves, and sweet and savory croissant toasts, which are croissant halves flavored with sugar butter or garlic spreads. Kiji also proudly states that they use French butter for their breads and pastries. And because it was Halloween when we visited, they had special pastries on display and they were also giving away mini croissants to trick-or-treaters. So now let's talk pastry and the selection that they have. Di mawawala yung standards like French butter croissant, pan au chocolat, and queen almond. But they also have Asian-inspired flavors which add emphasis to the French-Japanese fusion concept. For example, there's the matcha pistachio cube croissant. By the way, those cube type pastries do contain fillings in addition to their coating on top. There's the calamansi curd croissant there in the back, a new addition to the menu because they do come up with new flavors every so often and depending on the season. They also have some flavors that are part of their Formosa special product line which is a nod to the founder's Taiwanese background. Those have the blue labels. I tried the red bean mochi there in the back from the Formosa specials and it has a chunky red bean paste and a super chewy white mochi filling which makes for a distinct combination of textures. I've also tried the black sesame cube and enjoyed the rich nutty taste of the black sesame filling which is a must try for the black sesame lovers out there. Please subscribe if you're enjoying this video so far. On top of the display, they have banana and lemon mini loaves. These are perfect to have with a non-sweet cup of coffee. I have tried the lemon loaf and it has a delicious balance of sweet, rich, and tart flavors. FYI, some menu items are made in limited amounts while others are only available during the weekends. So plan your visit or order accordingly. For drinks, we got the limited edition pumpkin spice and the iced romano. The pumpkin spice latte is generous on the spice with the nutmeg and cinnamon flavors standing out while Kiji's take on the iced romano is a medium roast with a refreshing touch of orangey citrus. For pastries, we went with Queen Amon and the PB&J cube which are my favorites from them. The cube contains a generous amount of fillings composed of peanut butter, custard cream, and a mixed berry jam. The peanut butter is sweet and smooth rather than the crunchy type while the berry jam is surprisingly tart and has a strong blueberry flavor. The tartness of which provides a contrast to the peanut butter. So instead of having two sweet fillings inside, mas hindi nakakauma yung ganitong sweet-sour combination. The Queen Amon is a great example of Kiji's version of the Japanese flavor profile given to a French pastry. It showcases the delicate flaky pastry and how it is rich but not too buttery while the caramelized glaze is well-made and flavorful but not thickly applied. So there's a richness to this treat that doesn't feel excessive. As for the soft serve, you can get a cup for 170 or 180 pesos depending on the flavor. 
Previously, they also had Taiwan green tea. Not sure if they alternate, but on that day, it was light milk and black sesame being offered, so we went with the combination. The taste of light milk is definitely true to its name. It's not the rich, buttery type that has a strong, heavy cream flavor. This is super subtle, so I'm glad I combined it with the black sesame for an earthy aroma. It also comes with a garnish of sliced toasted pastry. Please subscribe for more resto tours and reviews.